Problem 2.57. This is a one-dimensional conduction case in which a wall is initially at a given temperature and then it starts being heated up by a fluid. Therefore, convection takes place. The properties are constant and there is no internal heat generation. We need to determine the differential equation for this problem, the boundary conditions, and the initial conditions. We also need to determine and plot the temperature distribution at different conditions. It is also required to plot the heat flux at different locations. And at the end, we have to write an expression for the total heat transfer into the wall per unit volume. Let's just start the analysis with the heat equation. Since it's one dimensional, the T dy is equal to zero, as well as the D dz. There is no heat generation, so this term disappears. And the final differential equation for this problem is simply the second is equal to one dt dt. Let's now do the bandit conditions. At x is equal to zero, we notice that there is going to be insulation, therefore the T dx at x is equal to zero is going to be equal to zero. At the other side of the wall, we have convection, therefore we write it as T at L T minus the fluid temperature is equal to at x is equal to L. This is a second kind boundary condition. This is a third kind boundary condition. Let's now do the initial condition. Since the temperature was fixed at the beginning of time, we could simply write it as T at any position, time equal to zero, at an initial temperature. So once again, this is the differential equation. Notice that it's a second degree on a space, first degree on time, we have the two boundary conditions, one at x is equal to zero, one at x is equal to L, and the initial condition. The second part of the problem is to sketch temperature distributions for different conditions. The first condition is when time is equal to zero. At time equal to zero, the temperature is constant. Therefore, the temperature profile will be a horizontal line throughout the whole wall. The value of this temperature is Ti. The second condition is as time increases. The side of the wall that is affected by convection will be the one that has the most dramatic change. The temperature will be increasing until it eventually will reach a T infinity value. As time increases, the wall will tend to reach that T infinity value, which is the surrounding temperature. Once the steady condition has been reached, the temperature of the whole bar will be equal to T infinity, which is the temperature of the surrounding fluid. The third part of the problem is to sketch the heat flux as a function of time at two different positions. The first position is at x is equal to zero. The second one is at x is equal to L. Let's just start with x is equal to zero. At x is equal to zero, we had an adiabatic wall. Therefore, the heat flux at that position is always going to be zero. At x is equal to L, we have two conditions. One's when the time is equal to zero, and the second one when time is greater than zero. So let's just start at t equal to zero. At that point, we have convection that takes place. So we have that the heat flux at time equal to zero position L, is equal to h t at that particular position and time minus the fluid um, temperature. At when time is greater than zero, we said that the heat flux at L t is equal to h t L t. Notice that in the plot we have negative Qx. This means that the flux is dissipated away from the wall and taken by the fluid. 
If we notice a time equal to zero, we have the maximum amount of flux that is being dissipated. That amount of flux reduces over time. That indicates that as time increases, the change in temperature will also go down. The last part of the problem is asking us to write an expression to calculate the total energy transfer to the wall per unit volume. In order to do that, we're going to write the energy going in. Since it's the total energy, we're going to take the integral over time from zero to infinity of the convection energy, the surface area, over time. And we, then we're going to replace. Convection energy is simply H T infinity minus T at the surface at any given time, cross-sectional um, surface area, dt. Then we're going to take the quantities that are constant, h and as, out of the integral. So this becomes a h, as, the integral from 0 to infinity, t infinity minus t l t dt. If you recall, the volume that we have is equal to hs times l because of the surface. So then we could say that the energy in per unit volume is the same thing as h l and the integral that is given above. t infinity minus t l t dt. And this is the expression for the total energy transfer into the wall. In order to solve this integral, we need to have the exact evaluation of the temperature profile, input it into the integral, evaluate the integral, and then you will be able to get a proper value. Please go over all the steps of this particular problem to make sure that you're able to get differential equations, boundary conditions, initial conditions, and you understood how the sketches were obtained and how this particular function came about.